This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. These are nine of the stories that we're following this morning at Becker Private Equity. And thank you for listening. You know, we cover at Becker Private Equity very short business episodes, very short private equity episodes, uh, interviews with leaders. And we also do profiles on different leaders as well. We'll have a profile today coming out on Karen Lynch, uh, the CEO of, of CVS Health. We hope that you enjoy that. So here's where we're at today. First, the markets are relatively flat today. They're slightly up now. They were down earlier. They've rebounded in pointing slightly in the right direction based on some positive comments Chairman Powell had about inflation starting to cool. Second, Tesla jumps again today after jumping yesterday. It was up about 6 7% yesterday. It's about 9% today. That's up about 15% over two days. It's back to a spot where it's down only about 6 7% year to date. So that's the second story we're following today. And that's fasting from at one point being down 30%. Again, it goes with the old adage, don't bet against Elon Musk. Uh, and he was sort of the, the precursor, the, the launcher of the electric vehicle revolution. Third, R1RCM, for people in healthcare, people will recognize this name. This is one of the great revenue cycle firms. This is our third story of the day. It is down about 15% today. We'll keep on following that. That's a great company and fascinating to see what's happening there. Fourth, and something we talked about a little bit yesterday, is Tempest AI. Tempest AI is an AI oncology firm that some of the great systems in the country use for data and analytics for, for cancer diagnosis and figuring out the next steps and what to do and testing it. This is a company founded by Eric Lefkowski, who also founded Groupon, a brilliant, brilliant person. It's up another 6 7% today after being up 15% yesterday. So that's the fourth story that we're following currently. The, the fifth story we're following is uh, we'll see more job stats on Friday. But there's an article today in CNN Business about the job market starting to lose steam. Oh, that's unwelcome for job seekers, but welcome for stock market watchers within reason, because it is what drives the Fed to be closer and closer to cutting rates. Sixth story we're following today, the third month in a row of factories slowing down, which is another one of these great indicators that the overall machinery of our country, the business is moving in the wrong direction, the economy is moving in the wrong direction, not the right direction. But also, again, all these things have a negative and a positive within reason. That negative means the Fed may be closer to reducing rates. The, the seventh story we're following today, which I think is an absolute fascinating story, is BlackRock, one of the largest asset managers in the U.S., not really an alternative asset manager. It is buying Prequent for $3.2 billion. This is reported across the financial news, appearance, and everything else. Prequent is a London-based company which provides about the best data on private equity funds and the private equity business as almost anybody, with PitchBook also being fantastic. And so the fascinating thing about this is one of the things you have in the private equity business and for investors, limited partners like myself and and tons and tons of both people as well as institutions and pension funds and so forth, is there is a broad, broad array of private equity funds, and there's not really a centralized database as to how one is doing versus another is doing. You get these generalized notions of returns in private equity versus private credit. Over time, slightly better than the S&P, but you give up liquidity for that advantage, uh, and you pay higher fees for that advantage, but overall, net on net, you should get over time slightly better returns in private equity than it than in the public markets. But the the continuum of the how the private equity funds do is all over the board. One of the things that BlackRock hopes to do is to make that reporting by buying prequin a, a, a much clearer, clearer, and less opaque situation, which uh, for all of us would be would be welcome. They're buying prequin. Prequin, I always call it for three point two billion. It, it uh, it's a it's a big deal, and they're probably prequins the leading source. At least it, it says in this one place the leading source of data for private markets. I think that's probably right with PitchBook, but but a fascinating acquisition. The, the, the next story we're following is Becker Private Equity, our podcast, uh, knocked it out of the park this past month in terms of um, downloads and listenership, also ranked number one in Apple Business News in terms of listenership, and and, and, and just had a great, great month and great week of, of downloads and listenership, so we thank our audience for that. 
Finally, the ninth story we're following is is adjustable rate mortgages, and this is again another one of those many canaries in the coal coal in the, in the coal mine of uh, as adjustable rate mortgages get lifted for literally tens of thousands of borrowers per month. This puts tremendous stress on people's pocketbooks. If you signed up for an adjustable rate, rate mortgage five, seven years ago, and now your mortgage is being raised up by a huge degree, this is a very scary situation uh, for so many people, and we're watching that very, very closely. Uh, it, thank you for listening to the Becker Private Equity and Business Podcast. We'll be back with you shortly to discuss more news and more issues. Thank you very much, and thank you to Chanel Bunger, our wonderful, wonderful producer who's just fantastic. Thank you.